Hello again and welcome to Crop Life Retail Week. It's Paul Shrimp here with Eric Spilligoy once again. Uh, another busy week. Uh, we've had some cold snaps. I know there's people that have had some wild cold snaps in North Dakota and out that way. Uh, boy, we uh, our hearts go out to you guys. Hopefully you can get some field work done uh, in the near future here, but uh, uh, it looks pretty rough out there and we're, we're sorry to see that. So good luck to all of you and, and uh, keep up the keep the good fight going. But uh, I did want to mention a couple things in the news. I guess, um, of all things, we have a new equipment entry uh, from the global market coming to the U.S. Eric, you want to share a few thoughts on it? Sure. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, as you might remember, 2015 has been a bit of a slow year for the equipment sector. Uh, I know that sales for combines and tractors have been off. Uh, self-propelled sprayers as well, as we've seen large companies as Ag like Agco and John Deere uh, cutting back on their workforces as a result of the slowdown. But um, maybe the, uh, the shift is coming back into a prosperous marketplace. Uh, got word last week that a Dutch manufacturer of sprayers called AgraFact is uh, encouraged enough to now be entering the U.S. market with its sprayer line uh, under the Condor name. And, Paul, what I found very interesting is they have the uh, standard model sizes you would assume for uh, product tanks, a 900-gallon and a 1,300-gallon, but one of their products is called the Condor Endurance. This one has a 2,100-gallon tank and a 180-foot boom, um, which I know I'm sure there's a lot of applicators out there that will be real interested to try a sprayer that is probably large enough to have its own zip code. <laughs> That's incredible, Eric. Well, you know, it's you, you wonder if we had hit the top range, uh, the top range in size for the, for booms, and uh, I guess we're going to have a, an experiment to see if there's something something more yet uh, that we can get to in terms of size. Well, it's very interesting. Uh, in other uh, interesting news, um, we've seen a lot on UAVs lately. We've seen a lot uh, in terms of the FAA making moves on regulations, maybe doing some experimental work with companies and with with outside uh, outside. Um, uh, interests that are trying to do different things with UAVs in um, in the agricultural market. Uh, I went back and looked at some of the uh, some of the uh, footage that I'd shot at a, at a meeting in D.C. where I had met a, a number of uh, scientists working on different projects. And uh, one individual was Dr. Alex Thomason at the Texas A&M University, and he shared a few thoughts with me on tape. I thought I'd uh, share with you today, and here they are. Uh, more recently, I've done a lot of work in remote sensing, which is uh, everything from satellite imagery to aircraft imagery. And the, and the direction that I see things going now uh, is with UAVs or drones, unmanned aerial vehicles carrying cameras and other sensing devices. Um, the advantages that you get with those are that they're very flexible. You can go out to the field and begin to fly at a moment's notice. Uh, the cost per flight is relatively low. They fly at a relatively low altitude, so the detail in the imagery that you get is, is quite high. Um, and uh, I think that we also have the potential as we go into the future to have robotic uh, attachments on UAVs, like hands, for example, that might ultimately be able to grasp a leaf and manipulate it so that the camera on board can look and see if certain insects are present or disease uh, diseases exist on the leaf or not. Well, interesting stuff there. Hope you appreciated that, and uh, we appreciate you joining us for this edition of Retail Week, and we will see you next week.